Hi my dear friends, this is Taz from Taslima Maya Art. Welcome to my channel of Mixed Media and Fluid Art Creations. It's great to have you here. If you're new, please do check out my other videos, as most of them are tutorials and step-by-step -step for beginners. And don't forget to hit those like, share and subscribe buttons. And do leave me a comment, I love hearing from you. So I'm super excited to say that today, courtesy of Leslie Onstad, we have the wonderful Colour Art Cornucopia of Colour Fall event. And you are now on day one of a two-day event featuring 15 amazingly talented artists who are going to be bringing their very best using Colour Art products. The event kicked off with the Colour Art Mama herself, Leslie, and up before me was Fantasy Land by Love Acrylic. So if you missed any of the artists before me, please do go back and watch them at the end of today's train. I'll put the links in the description box below so you'll find a playlist for both days down there. So once again, my creative friends, you have the opportunity to win a massive $400 shopping spree on the Colour Art website. So how do you do that? Well, the instructions are as follows. You will need to watch all the premieres in the lineup across the two days. Each channel will reveal a secret word or two, which you need to note down in succession to create a secret phrase. You will also need to subscribe to each artist's channel, leave a comment on each video and engage in the live premieres if possible. And once you've collected all of the secret words and put them together to construct the secret phrase, you will need to submit this phrase on the Colour Art website for your chance to win big. The deadline of the secret phrase on the website is the 3rd of November and the winners will be announced on the 6th of November on the website. But that's not all folks, you'll also have the amazing opportunity to win one of 15 individual channel prizes of a $50 set of stunning prism pour paints, which are just gorgeous. So to be entered into a prize draw for this, simply leave a comment on each video that you view. 15 different winners will be picked at random by the channel owners and announced on the website on the 6th of November. So best of luck to you on the $400 spending spree and the channel prizes. I hope you win. So today I'll be showing you how I made this show-stopping fall or autumn-inspired mixed-media artwork. It involved creating swiped paint skins for my 3D printed maple leaves on a swipe background with an experimental brush hand painted bokeh effect giving the illusion of light coming through the branches on an oval canvas of 30 by 40 centimeters dimension and it's resined. In part one we'll be swiping the background using colour art pigments so let's get down to the paint table. Okay so I've got my oval canvas here and I'm going to start doing the background for my autumn leaves mixed media painting. For the background I'm going to go with darker muted colours such as greens and browns and coppery colours and maybe a bit of yellow to give the impression of being in the distance and receding or some depth. I'm going to use almost entirely colour art products here, so Blingit, Primary Elements, Prism Pour and the Vivid Enamel pouring medium in the colour art lines. I do want a fair bit of shimmer in the background to give it that added sparkle that only colour art pigments can. All of these pigments have been mixed with a dash of Josonia varnish and Vivid Enamel. If you're unsure about how to mix your pigments into paint, please watch my video number 71 on my channel and that takes you through it step by step. My consistency here is roughly a 3 second trace and all of the paints are mixed in similar consistency. I'm just going with the flow and getting my paints onto the canvas at the moment. I'm also using up these colours, some of them mixed up a while ago and it'd be great to mix up some new colours soon. Sometimes the fun of paint pouring is that you have no idea what it will turn out like, but as long as it's a nicely mixed tonal background, I'll be happy. Lots of green so far, so I'm darkening it up with some custom colours I had left over. I think I added Amsterdam Thalo Green mixed with something else, probably a pigment as there's a lovely glisten and shine to it. Um, and then I also added some of my mixed up browns, and I'm putting more brown at the top this was a coppery colour, really stunning colour, lots of depth. And I'm also bringing it down to the lower half as well. I also added Baltic Amber with per persimmon mixed up half and half and Reeves Copper. So you could see this against some of the lighter colours below. 
So you just saw me tilt my canvas to ensure all my colours were touching and covering the bare pockets of canvas there. And then I popped some air bubbles trapped in my paint with my chef's torch. And now I'm going to use my two cell activators. They're using Australian Floral and Amsterdam Lamp Black and Titanium White, um, roughly a 3 to 1 ratio. And I'm going to do a swipe over the top of the paints. I'm not really looking for strong cells or lacing because I will tilt them to make them more subtle since the, it's the background. I did not want it to be too busy. So I'm alternating. I'm putting the white down and then the black and then the black down first and then the white on top and simply swiping over my colours there. This is just me having fun experimenting and just seeing what happens really. So just quickly to say that all of my pigments were mixed with Colorat's pouring medium which was the Vivid Enamel and I'll put all the ratios down in my description box below so you'd see all my colours that I used, all the pigments as well as the pouring medium and the ratios down there. And I really loved how the background turned out. It was a combination of the sparkles from the mica pigments with little bits of Baltic amber, persimmon, splendor in the grass shining through the white and black tones of the cell activators. So once the background is done, I'm just going to spin it out a little and tilt it and then leave it to dry naturally. And then I'll be right back with you. In part two, I will show you my 3D printed autumn leaf templates from Pour Away Fluid Art. Okay guys, so I want to show you something that arrived the other day um, and it's from a company called Pour Away Fluid Art and I've been looking forward to using this. I've seen it being used in other people's videos like Laurie Frinzer from Art by Sparkle and I really wanted to show you what I ordered. Um, they are a company who create 3D printed outlines um, so I can show you the piece I'm going to be using for this particular pour. And it's called Autumn Leaves and it's absolutely stunning because I've seen it on the website and I just want to quickly show you what that looks like. So let's just unwrap it. And here it is. So this is a piece I'll be using for the Colour Art event, Cornucopia of Colours. And they're all made out of plastic um, outlines of beautiful leaves autumnal leaves and I'll be creating paint skins to go inside of these um, and see how that goes. So just to quickly show you, okay so they've got a couple of male profile on the sides and that's what they kind of look like. Fabulous, on to the next phase. In part three I'll be creating swiped autumnal paint skins on my silicon mat for my maple leaves. Okay, so I just want to show you some of the true paints I'll be using for this event as well, for this particular artwork. And they range from Amsterdam to Pebio to uh, Reeves as well, which is something they sell over here in the UK. I'm not sure if you can get it, but I'm going to be mixing these colours in. And I'm going to be adding some of these beautiful colour art primary element pigments to my colour. So Bleeding Heart is going to go in with the red. Colour art Isadora is going in with this um, Azo Yellow Medium. Sassafras is going in with my metallic iridescent copper and bronze which all three will be mixed together and persimmon is going to go into my opaque burnt umber and then finally I have fennel flowers I'm going to add a bit more of this a combination of these two Isadora and fennel flowers into my yellow okay and that's the next plan so all of these beautiful color art primary elements and blingit pigments will hopefully give it a bit of glisten and shine and a bit of a kick in terms of sparkle, which is what I want for this painting. Okay, so here are my beautiful colours. I'm going to quickly show you each one. Um, so here's this one, and I'll put the names up on the screen for you. And this is the consistency that I'm going for. Very fluid. Using my pouring medium, which I'll put up on the screen for you as well. So I'm just going to mix these up because they've been sitting for a overnight. Um, there's this one, which is the Reeves and the Copper from Pebio. Really beautiful colour. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. Um, and as I said, I'm going to add some of these pigments into these colours as well. So I'll just show you how I'm doing that. I'm pretty much simply taking a dash of this, putting it in. Okay. 
I'm going to stir it up. All that's going to do is give it that added shine that I really, really want from the beautiful colour art pigments. You can see already that's changed colour. I didn't even need a lot of it. That's really, really golden, molten, amber, copper, stunning. I'm going to do exactly the same with all of these. Okay, so this one is Primary Elements, Bleeding Heart, and that's going into my red. I'm going to pick some of it up. And it goes. And I just stir it in slowly. So I don't get any lumps. And again, I'm going to let this sit before I pour it. Wow, there's a lot of glisten in there now. Very different to what it was. And I don't know if you're picking it up on the camera, but it's so shiny now, this red. And that was a pyro red with Amsterdam, which looked a little bit bland. I mean, it was vibrant, but it was not glistening like it is now. It's really shiny. You can see it in the, in the sun there. I'm going to do the same with Sassafras. It's a beautiful colour from Primary Elements. And this is obviously an art pigment as well, so it's got dried paint pigment in there, so it doesn't dissolve in epoxy resin, but it can be used in water-soluble products. So you can create your own, own paint with it. And I'm not putting too much in because I actually don't need a lot given the amount of paint I have in these. And I'll just quickly go through um, the um, pouring medium. So the pouring medium was... So it's one part De La Rowney pouring medium, two parts PVA, which is craft PVA, and one part water. Um, and that's mixed roughly 60 to 40 paint uh, with my paint, depending on consistency. So I'm trying to get the same consistency across the board. Okay, so let's do this one. So you get the idea now. Okay, so... See that orange? And I'll do the same with these colours here and my Splendour in the Grass into the green. And also I'm going to be putting Baltic Amber into my uh, darker brown colour here, which is Burnt Amber. Okay, so see you in a minute. The next step is to add two little drops of Montmartre silicone oil into my swipe colour, which is the black. And again, I have the list of all my colours and brands in the description box below. And then I start pouring onto my silicon mat because I am ultimately trying to create a paint skin that's going to go inside my 3D leaf or maple leaf um, templates that I have. So here I am just layering all my paints in stripes really on top of each other onto my silicon mat. And then I will wait for this to dry and peel it right off. So I deliberately chose colours that are very, very beautiful and autumnal with the orange, brown, green, yellows and reds and some copper in there as well. So those colours remind me of the beautiful leaves falling off the trees around this time of year, you know, the crunchy leaves underfoot. And here I'm just laying down my swipe colour and swiping using, um, it's just a plastic vial divider, which I then wipe off and reuse. So there's no waste and you can already see the cells coming up and I use my torch there to bring up even more cells and they grow really quite rapidly because my consistency of paint was relatively thin or thinner than I usually have it. So the cells grew and grew and grew as you can see here and um, ultimately when it dried I did lose some of those cell lines because it, the black di did sink into the thinner paints a little bit more than I would have liked but Nevertheless, I do end up with a really beautiful paint skin that I can use for my maple leaves. If I were to do this again, I would probably thicken up my paints a little bit more. And given that it was autumn over here in the UK, it was really cold in my garden studio. So this paint skin actually took a really, really long time to dry. And in that time, it kind of morphed a little bit, but that was okay. I still really like the outcome. I think if I were to do it again I'd thicken up my paints a lot more and keep the room temperature constant. So here we have the dried background pour and I think it's really quite pretty. You can see so many different colours in this from all those beautiful shimmery um, pigments from Colorart and you can see the Baltic Amber, Persimmon, 
and the splendor and the grass, quite a lot of colors. And I think it's perfect really for the background because it's not overpowering. In phase four, I'll be creating a bokka effect for the background, assembling my pieces and resining my leaves. Hi, so I'm going to be using these lovely stubble brushes, which I got from Amazon to um, create round circles of bokka, I think it's called. And it's similar to this stubbled effect here. You can see blues and greens. And I just want to give the background a bit more depth. So as a former photography enthusiast, I was really, really interested in the Bokka effect, which is the aesthetic quality of the blur produced in out of focus parts of an image caused by circles of confusion. Bokka has also been defined as the way the lens renders out of focus points of light. And I really wanted to bring that into this background for my painting. The term actually comes from a Japanese word which means blur or haze or blur quality and I love experimentation and I thought maybe I could replicate this in the form of a painting so I've added all these circles of light of different colours onto my background and then I sprinkled white paint over them to give the same effect. I'd really love to hear what your view of this is. Did I manage to get the effect right on my first time? Um, let me know in the comment box below. And now for a super fun part, assembling my maple leaves with my paint skin and my templates. So my secret words are about to come up in a couple of minutes, so keep your eyes peeled. And you can watch me do the really satisfying job of peeling my paint skin off my silicon mat. I love this part, I'm sure you do too. So here's my secret words. That is how. That is how. Good luck with the competition for the $400 spending spree on the Colour Art website, I hope you win. What I'm doing here now is just adding diamond glaze glue to my outlines, my templates, and then gluing them onto my paint skin, then cutting them out using a razor, um, a craft knife and some scissors and then assembling them on my background there. You can already see how beautiful this piece started to look. But wait, it's not finished yet. I paste these pieces on, the acrylic skins on, to the canvas using very simply triart glass. And I brush that on with a paintbrush as you'll see in a minute, straight from the bottle, and I assemble my leaves onto my canvas. It's looking really, really good, better than I thought it would. I really love this so far. If you're enjoying, please consider subscribing. Here, I'm just about to put the final touches on. I'm going to add resin and I'm adding UV resin straight into my templates there over the top of my paint skins. I warmed it up and I'm pouring it right in there and it's leveling itself out. I'm taking out the air bubbles using a chef's torch. I'm going to wait for it to um, cure under my UV light. And then that's it. That's my finished outcome. What do you think of it? I really hope you like it. I absolutely love this piece. Even the bokeh effect in the background. All those beautiful colour art pigments peeking through the background below. And the resin over the beautiful paint skins. All those autumnal colours. I really hope you enjoyed this little journey with me. And enjoyed watching me create this beautiful um, mixed media artwork using colour art products. A big shout out goes to Leslie Onstad and all my colour art affiliate friends for having me on. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this one. And up after me now will be the very talented Arisa Ru Art. So please do go over to her channel. The link is in my description box below. Thank you so much for being here and supporting me. I appreciate you very much.